Congratulations! You've just installed Arch Linux, one of the most customizable and lightweight Linux distributions out there. But the journey doesn't end here. In this video, I'll walk you through the 10 essential things you should do after installing Arch Linux to make it fully functional and user-friendly. Let's dive in! Here, we will not talk about installing the desktop environment, creating an account and so on like when you install a bare metal Arch Linux. All these you can easily install using the Arch Linux official install script. This script is a far easy way to install Arch Linux and can be done by anyone. You can check the video in the description on how to install Arch Linux. First things first, update your system. Arch is a rolling release distro, so staying updated is crucial. A rolling release distro is a type of Linux distribution that continuously updates its software packages rather than bundling them into distinct versions or releases. Instead of releasing a new version every six months or year, like Ubuntu 22.04, then Ubuntu 24.04, etc., a rolling release distro updates packages as soon as they are ready. Your system is always up to date, kind of like how Google Chrome just updates in the background. Open a terminal and run this command to start the update. Mine is already up to date. Next, let's install some must-have tools like Nano and Vim. Arch doesn't come with many of them out of the box. You should also enable the multi-lib repository. Multi-lib is an official Arch Linux repository that provides 32-bit libraries for 64-bit systems. It allows you to run 32-bit applications, like older games, Wine, or legacy software, on your 64-bit Arch install. By default, the multi-lib repo is disabled, but it's easy to enable. To enable, just uncomment the multi-lib section. Before you save the file, also enable color. To enable colored output in Pacman, locate the color line under the MISC options section. It's commented out by default. Just remove the number sign to activate it. Enabling color in Pacman's output makes it much easier to read and navigate, especially when updating or installing packages. It's a small tweak that makes a big difference, and I, especially if you're using the terminal often. Now you can save the file by pressing Ctrl plus O and exit with Ctrl plus X. Update your package list after you save the file. Let us now install microcode updates. First check your CPU vendor. For AMD CPUs, just run this command. Microcode updates are crucial for fixing CPU bugs, improving stability, and even patching security vulnerabilities like Spectre and Meltdown. If you're running Arch Linux, you should install them right away. Most Arch Linux systems use Grub as the bootloader. After installing the microcode package, you'll need to update Grub to ensure it loads the microcode properly at boot. Just run this command and then check if it was installed using the next command. Next, let us enable bash completion. This command installs the bash completion package, which adds smart tab completion for bash. Bash completion is a feature that makes your command line life way easier by helping you auto-complete commands, file names, options, and arguments when you press the tab key in the terminal. 
Bash completion works well with commands run as your regular user, but it doesn't automatically apply when using sudo. To fix this, open your bash configuration file and add the following line at the end. This enables tab completion for commands prefixed with sudo. After saving the file, run this command. Let us see if it works. Let me type something and hit the tab key. It works. Also install essential software, Firefox for browsing, LibreOffice for your office tasks, and VLC for multimedia. Let us now enable the AUR. The AUR is where Arch really shines. Use a helper like Yay to make your life easier. The AUR stands for Arch User Repository and it's one of the best things about the Arch Linux ecosystem. The AUR is a community-driven repository for Arch Linux users. It contains user-submitted package build scripts, called PKG builds, that let you easily install software not available in the official Arch repos. Think of it as a giant community curated app store, but for the command line. Running this command, for example, installs Chrome from the AUR. It downloads the PKG build, builds the package, and installs it. Let us also add Flatpak, so we have access to more software. Using Flatpak on Arch Linux is a great way to install sandboxed apps, especially if you want access to a huge range of software that might not be in the official repos or the AUR. Flatpak is a universal packaging system that lets you install applications in a sandboxed environment, independent of your system's package manager. Install Flatpak by running this command. Then add Flathub as its main repository for Flatpak applications. Restart your system or log out and back in to fully activate Flatpak integration, especially for GUI apps.
You can also explore and install any of the thousands of apps available on FlatHub. Also enable trim for your SSD. That is if your machine has an SSD disk. Enabling trim for your SSD on Arch Linux or any Linux distro is a performance and longevity booster for your drive. Trim is a command that tells your SSD which data blocks are no longer in use and can be wiped internally. Without trim, your SSD wouldn't know which blocks to clean up and performance could slowly degrade over time. Check the status of trim using this last command. Using faster Arch mirrors can seriously speed up package downloads and updates. First, install Reflector. Reflector is a tool that ranks and sorts Arch mirrors based on speed, age, or location. This command uses Reflector to generate an optimized Arch Linux mirror list, which speeds up your package downloads. Your system will use the five fastest recently updated mirrors, which means faster Pacman updates reduced package download times and more reliable installs. Next, improve security by installing a firewall and enabling it. Enable it to auto start with the system at boot time using this command. Before you get too deep into customizations, set up backups. Install TimeShift. TimeShift is a solid tool for creating system snapshots, i.e., especially if you're using BTRFS or EXT4. For BTRFS users, TimeShift can handle snapshots natively. If you're on EXT4, it works like a charm too, but make sure you have enough disk space. After installation, just run the wizard and you are good to go. It will start creating snapshots automatically, and you will find them on this window. Also install a GUI Pacman frontend. Using a GUI frontend for Pacman can make package management a lot more user-friendly, especially if you're more comfortable with point-and-click tools than the terminal. Pamac is the GUI used by Manjaro, and it works great on Arch, too. Remember to enable AUR support, as it is not enabled by default.
Also look up on how to install GPU drivers for NVIDIA and AMD on Arch Linux, as I have neither of those on my system. And that's it! Your Arch Linux system is now fully set up and ready to use. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more Linux content. Got questions? Drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.